I'm Terry Owen, and I'm privileged to be here today with my awesome husband, Pastor Kurt Owen. And last time we were with you, we were talking about the uncertain times that people keep talking about that we're living in. And there's nothing uncertain about the times that we're living in, especially for a believer. And so Mm -hmm. we were having this conversation, and the conversation really centered about, um, you were talking about the the post that I wrote on Facebook about Mm -hmm. how it it just hurts our hearts that people are saying that they're living in uncertain times. And these people are Christians and we understand the unbelievers talking about that they're living in uncertain times, but we as Christians should never be living in uncertain times. No. In fact, if you're living in uncertain times, that's an indication for you Mm -hmm. that you need to mature and grow in your Christian walk and in your relationship with the Lord. And we started addressing initially and we're going to talk a little bit about it today, about one of the reasons people say they're uncertain times is they're uncertain about the Lord. And we gave the illustration that if the Lord, if people talked about the Lord the way they talked about, or excuse me, if they talked about a plumber the way they talked about the Lord, nobody would ever hire him, right? No, but, but the thing is that I don't think that people realize that that's what they're assigning to the Lord. I think that I think that they're just taking God completely out of the equation. Yeah, I, I think that's true. I think though that that they have somehow said that God is has no has no honor or integrity. Really, I mean, he he. But but no one would be, no one would admit that that's what they're saying by behaving this way. Is what I'm saying. Yeah, I, 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 yeah, I think that's true. I, th- I think that they would use the whole "God is sovereign" trash to uh, mm-hmm. to right, to which do you that. Discussed earlier. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't get into it as much as we should, but and, and we'll we'll talk about that in a minute. And people say, "Did you just say that God is sovereign is trash?" The way most people minister it, yes, absolutely, it's trash, and it's become an excuse. Mm-hmm. That that God has no integrity, and and you're right. I I don't think people look at it that way. I think that they think that they somehow it's an honor and a reverence to God that God can just do anything He wants. But again, going back to what we were saying, that you if if we were talking about a plumber or an electrician, the way people talk about the Lord, mm-hmm. nobody would have a relationship with Him. Well, they wouldn't hire him. They would not hire him. Right. Well, I don't think they'd have a relationship with him. If you saw a guy that had on the side of his van, you never know what I'm going to do. You never know if I'm going to show up. You never know when I show up, whether I'm going to help you or hurt you. Mm-hmm. Um, you never know whether I'm going to be the one that messed up your pipes or not right. to, in order to get the job. Right, that I somehow broke into your sabotaged house at night, you. yeah, and sabotaged you simply so you would call me. You, you do realize we, we in Florida, this actually happened. Um, I don't know if you ever knew about this, but there was two brothers, and one had a roofing business, and one had a pressure washing business, and the pressure washing brother came by first, and he said, um, he said, hey, I'll pressure wash your roof for you, get it all cleaned up. But he pressure washed it so hard, it messed up the roof. So then his brother would come by and say, hey, I see that your roof is messed up and you need, you need a new roof. And that's the way they work business. And they got arrested right. <laughs> because that's not right. God, and, and a lot of times people say, well, God did this to you so that you would call upon him. Well, then it's not a genuine relationship with God. It's extortion at that point. And manipulation. And manipulation. There's no genuineness to the relationship at all. Right. It's like saying that you'd fall in love with your stalker. Exactly. Exactly. And we don't recommend that ever. Ever. And so uh, in in talking about this, and people say, well, how are you saying that? And, And listen, if you're saying that God is sovereign, and what you mean by that is he can just do whatever he wants to do, then you do not understand him at all. Right. You're saying that he has no integrity. Mm-hmm. You're saying that his word means nothing, mm-hmm. that he can promise you something and didn't do something completely different because he is sovereign. You are lying about him. That is not true because though he is sovereign, though he is all powerful, he is a God of honor and a God of integrity. He is a God of love. Now, here's one of the things that we see as far as In this story, I think, in my opinion, has been used more to justify what I call if theology, is if God delivers me, then great. 
If he doesn't, I'm still going to serve God. Right. And honestly, I, and I've heard this from so many ministers. I've heard it from so many people, people that I respect, okay, that, and it's like you haven't read the story. Right. <laughs> okay, so uh, long the short of it, because we, we don't have very much time here, but um, basically Nebuchadnezzar had, uh, was very, very prideful. And so he decides that he is, he's going to set up a God and this God is going to be what everybody's going to worship. And so, and if you don't worship this God, then you're dead. Okay. And so, uh, there's some people, Daniel's, this is in the book of Daniel. Daniel has three friends, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Now, which I find interesting because when I was a kid and my grandmother would tell me the story, she would describe them as the three Hebrew children, mm-hmm. but they were not children at all. Mm-hmm. These were three governors. These were not just kids. These were people that had been practicing in their walk with God, had been faithful to God, right. who knew God. Right. Okay. And so um, anyway, so they, Nebuchadnezzar gives this edict. Well, all these people are this order and all these people say that are jealous of them. They want them out of the way. They, they know that Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego are not. When they hear the music, when they see this God, they're not falling down to worship him. And they know that the king has said, you don't do that, you die, mm-hmm. right? And so um, they bring it to the king. Right. And so we're going we're gonna to pick up there. Um, Daniel chapter 3. Yeah, Daniel chapter 3. And uh, let's look in verse 8, okay? And this is basically when they're, they're ratting them out. It says, therefore, at the same time, the Chaldeans came forward and accused the Jews. They spoke and said, o, said to King Nebuchadnezzar, O king, live forever. You, O king, have made a decree. Everyone who hears the sound of the horn, the flute, the harp, the lyre, the psaltery, and symphony with all kinds of music shall fall down and worship the golden image. And whoever does not fall down and worship the golden image sh- or, and worship shall be cast into the midst of the burning fiery furnace. There are certain Jews who you have set over the affairs, see their governors of the province of Babylon, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. These men, O king, have not paid due regard to you. They do not serve your gods or worship the golden image which you have set up. Now, let me just stop here. Now, I don't know if we'll get through all this today, but do people around you know that you don't serve their gods? Right. Is there a difference? Is there a difference mm-hmm. that I'm not like you? Right. I don't believe in that. I don't, this is not how I worship. This is not how I live. And, and that my beliefs are so strong, they cannot be altered by any wind of doctrine. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and they can't be altered by pressure. Right. Right. Because that's what we're really. Yeah. By consequence. Yeah. That if, yeah, I believe this today until the consequence is so big that I'm going to quit believing it because I, or pretend not to believe it. Right. Because of the way you'll think about it. And not only that, but like, well, I could just do it and not, it, you know, it won't be me doing, bowing down in my heart, but I'll do it physically so that I don't cause any problems for anybody else. Yeah. I don't offend anybody. I don't offend anybody. Yeah. Well, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego really didn't, didn't care. care who they offended. Okay. So, um, so it says that they, uh, then Nebuchadnezzar in rage and fury, uh, oh, excuse me. Yes, you're right. Okay. Uh, yeah. Um, then Nebuchadnezzar, in rage and fury, gave command to bring Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. So they brought these men before the king. Now, again, let's talk about this whole thing about being offensive. People, we live in a day where people are looking for a way to get offended. Mm -hmm. And quite frankly, if you are not offending someone, something is terribly wrong in your walk with God because somebody should be offended. Right? Because in this day, in this hour, if you just want to talk about Jesus, they get offended. Right. And we and we see this on our posts. Um, oh, yeah. On our yeah. ministry pages and people calling us the Antichrist and things like that because... Well, they we, call me the Antichrist. Right. I'm the nice one. But, yeah. But, but when we take a firm stand that we're going to stand on the scripture, people get offended. And that the word is true. Right. And, um, and, and listen... Uh, even if you're doing the right thing, what, you know, we have free ministers conferences. Our partners make it possible that as we go around the world, we, we'll have like a free ministers conference and we'll advertise. It's a free conference. No offering will be received because in some of the areas that we've gone, people, people have, have been, been abused. so abused 
we, we want to reach the people and we want them to know we have no agenda, but they're good. And yet <laughs> we will get people attacking us. You're just here for the money. What money? We're not receiving an offering. We're not asking people to pay a, a fee. What are you talking about? Right. And yet that's what they accuse us of. This is all, you're just a charlatan. You're just all this. Okay, so I've offended them. And all I've done is say, hey, come to this meeting. In some instance, we're going to feed you. We're going to teach you the word of God. Right. And it's absolutely free and no pressure will be applied. Mm -hmm. You need to get used to the fact that if you're actually going to live for the Lord, somebody's going to be offended. It's true. And by the way, if you get offended, and by the way, if you talk ugly about Christians, I hate to tell you this, you don't offend me. Like when you write that I'm the Antichrist, I'm not offended. I don't even care because it doesn't, it, I know I'm not. Right. Okay. Uh, the Antichrist is not going to be as handsome as I am. No, I'm, I'm just teasing. Sure. I'm just teasing. Sure I'm true. teasing. Yeah, um, but in, in all sincerity, listen, people are going to attack you. You might as well settle, well, I don't want to live a life that way. Then you're never truly going to walk in your divine purpose. So one of the things that I'm going to plug on this one is one of the ways to break free of that insecurity is to um, go back and listen to your series on the snare of, of the fear of man brings a snare. Right. And, and we so actually that's have that available on the Kurt Owen.com uh, webpage. Yeah. So and if you can't afford it, we'll give it to you. It's not a problem. Um, but, and it's in two, two parts though. It's the fear of man will snare your ministry and the fear of man will, how does it say it for everybody else? The fear of man will bring a snare? Okay. And uh, so this is true of both ministers and regular people. Listen, we talked up our time. Uh, we'll be back soon. Remember, we love you very, very much. This is Kurt and Terry Owen saying, Jesus, Jesus is, is risen and victory is assured. assured.